So here we are in the audio workshop on Mr. Chippy's bench with Mr. Chippy and we're just going to start the preliminary um, looking at this Carrier CBHQ that's the front of it it was a bit nicotine this one and the case was even more nicotine so we've just been respraying the case hence it being all off now we've put our little cheapo dummy load on uh, because this radio, if you remember when I was doing some of the videos with doing servicing on a shoestring, we were using this as the kind of demonstration, it was kind of jammed on channel 9. And what we've actually found, if Mr Chippy would like to press transmit, and we can see the frequency counter there when it decides to do a count, it's on the 10 second um, setting at the moment, uh, it'll probably catch it next time round. Four, three, oh, cool, I, can make a, I should have put this on lower res. Oh, there we are. So, seven, three, whatever, it's off frequency anyway. What it is, I'm just going to. You can let go now, Mr. C. I'm just going to zoom this camera in. I've never seen this before. And what they've done isn't actually legal, but it's not a good idea. There's a little extra switch. There's there. Now, Mr. C, if you flick it the other way, and then go into transmit. And eventually the frequency counter will read, well, another count, watch paint dry while this is happening. Twenty-seven seven nine. that should be 125, but it's off frequency. So... What it is, and I'm just going to pause the video while Mr. C turns the set upside down. So I've got the set round so you can actually see what's going on here. We'll just zoom in and just see whether we can see. But underneath the print of the synthesizer, you see those yellow wires which go to that switch which they've fitted. There's a diode matrix there. And they've put the diodes in to make it go on to what is their favourite channel so they've got instant access to their favourite channel so that is going to come off because I thought this was a non-working set when it's because of a silly modification so we're just going to take that modification off right now okay so we've now removed the offending switch and the radio is now selecting the channels correctly now I'm just going to zoom in on this the power supply section of this radio and um, can you just tilt the radio so the camera can see the power supply? There we are. We've got two electrolytic capacitors. Uh, we've got the big one and we've got the smaller one above it. And we're just going to change those two because they've been in there for 35 years. And they may be working now, but the last thing you want to do is to send a radio out to the customer and they're packing after 20 minutes use. So we're just going to whip those two out and change them. And I'll tell you what they are when we've whipped them out. I seem to recall the 2200 microfarads and the other one's about um, 10 or 100, but I'll just uh, tell you exactly when we've done it. Right, so we've changed the capacitors in the power supply. The small one there in the 2200, which was 25 volts, we've upgraded to 35 volts and at 105 degree temperature. And just checking that the power supply output is somewhere near after those alterations. It's 13.63 without adjustment, so I don't feel any reason to alter that. But of course we could alter the preset resistor just down there. Whilst I've been at it, I've changed the meter lamp. I noticed previous repair, the TX lamp's been changed for an LED. I don't feel any reason to change that backwards. Um, yeah, It's going to be more reliable in the long term, but it's not factory original, which is how we like sets to be. So the next thing I'm going to show you on this set which is now demodified from its funny modification and uh, the power supply brought up to standard is the VCO. We've done these on other Cybernet 134 bordered sets and with the, other, with the overhead camera in the, other, in the main RF workshop. But uh, basically we're looking for the far end of resistor 4 for the VCO test point which is test point 1. And 
the service manual says this when I turn to the right page. Set the radio to channel 40 which we're on, connect the meter to between test point 1 and ground, then lo ro rotate to transformer 1 so that we have 4 volts. So test point 1 and transformer 1 We'll just rotate that slightly. It is in lock, but we're just going to get it a bit nearer just for the video's sake. Incidentally, this is done in receive mode. That's a bit too high, so that'll stabilise. So we've got 3.98, I think that's as near as we're going to get. So the next uh, procedure is to set the unit into transmit mode and this time we're just CT1 which is the red one behind coil T1 and once again we're going to need that to be somewhere around about 4 volts so we're going to transmit, I've got this into a dummy load on this bench and we've got 3.67 Very fine adjustments these. Three point nine one well, that'll do me. Gonna let it go back to receive three point nine eight transmit. 3.92 and then we need to go and check its in lock on channel 1 so we'll just pop the channel selector down to channel 1 which is difficult without a knob and what does it want us to expect this to be we're going to need it somewhere between 1.8 and 2.5 and volts and there we are 2.03 so that's within that and on transmit between 1.8 and 2.5 and volts, and it's 2.01. So there we are, that's the VCO set. There's the far side of resistor 4 for the test point, and then adjusting so transformer 1 for the receive side, and CT1 for the transmit side. That's reading 4 volts on channel 40, and then checking it's in lock on channel 1. So that's where, where we have it for now on this radio, and what we're going to now do is to just pop the front on it, take it into the RF workshop and we'll tune up the transmitter.